welcome back to Pulse Studios, home of 94.7 The Pulse Community Radio and Pulse Television. This show is produced by Diversitat students and volunteers. So, if you'd like to be a part of our show, or if you're interested in any of our media courses, head to our website at 947thepulse.com for more information. Next up, the Geelong Gallery's latest exhibition, The Great War, A Graphic Legacy, is on until August 24th. We sent Nicole along to go and check it out. I'm here today with Geoffrey Edwards, the director and co-curator of this exhibition, The Great War, A Graphic Legacy at the Geelong Gallery. Welcome, Geoffrey. Nicole, thank you. I'm glad you're here. Thank and you. this is uh, really the first exhibition of, of what doubtless will be many over the next few years dealing with and marking the centenary of the, uh, that great conflict variously called World War I or as we've termed it, the Great War. Yes, well I'm, I'm a bit uncertain about the greatness of war, however I think it is very timely. It's 100 years since the anniversary of the outbreak of World War I in 1914. So uh, what prompted this exhibition? I suppose what prompted it was knowing a few years ago that the, uh, this important centenary was, um, was looming and we wanted to be part of that. We also wanted to be part of the events that noted, commemorated uh, the war because in this collection, in the Geelong collection, there are a number of very key works and you and I are standing in front of one of them by one of the greatest of all the First World War Australian official war artists. His name Harold Septimus Power. When he wasn't at war he was painting draft horses and, um, and marvellous racing horses and of course he came into his own in the Great War by painting these great beasts hauling the guns through the men and road, the Somme mud and the battlefields. Well, that doesn't surprise me, actually, given the, the painting here. He's done a great job at portraying a, a horse behind you falling down and, and tossing its rider aside. Um, I've noticed that it's not just these grandiose paintings that are in the exhibition, but there seems to be a bit of propaganda, both pro and uh, against war. Indeed, when we were thinking, what would we do? We certainly wanted to use the works in the Geelong collection uh, and we needed to borrow a number. And we also have been in discussion over quite a while with two very prominent private collectors, one in Sydney and one in Melbourne. Perhaps the most poignant of all in the exhibition, although every single work is poignant in a different way, uh, the German artist Kathe Kollwitz, who lost her son on, in the German army, of course, on the Belgian front. And, but we certainly wanted, A, the four perspectives, the French, the British, the Australian and the German perspectives, artist perspectives on the war and we also wanted to balance the, in a way, the propagandist or the uh, calls to arms. Norman Lindsay is the very obvious one there. I mean, there's no, there's, he has all the subtlety of a sledgehammer in promoting uh, signing up and indeed his posters in the exhibition are our equivalent of the famous British recruiting poster with Lord Kitchener pointing at all the young, eligible young men saying, your country needs you. Well, the Lindsays are our equivalent. There's no mistaking the message. Um, to our eyes today, they look, frankly, jingoistic. But they, they look fairly crude, they're don't fairly they? They're fairly crude, uh, they're unsubtle, but there was no mistaking the message. So we wanted the balance between that kind of image, the official depiction of events, such as you and I are standing in front of now, but also more subtle interpretations of the effects of war on the home front, behind the scenes, the drudgery of soldiers behind battlefronts, and also more introspective reflections on personal experience. So we wanted to battle anti, uh, contrast anti and pro-war. Well, I think you've done a fantastic job. I, I particularly like the contrasts that are in the gallery. As you mentioned, Norman Lindsay, we associate with the magic pudding. We do, and these uh, are a long way from the magic pudding. They are a very, pudding. very long way from the magic pudding, but very graphic and very crude um, depictions of, of the, the German menace that is going to come and, and get us. And come on, it's your time to get out here and help your country 
country. Yes, there was no mistaking what would happen to the no. world and our world if you didn't sign up. I was thinking of the American poster, We Want You, yes. which is very similar. Um, but yes, very, very different from, from the female artist who, who lost her son at the start of the war and, and the sense of mourning that I think you really feel in those, um, I think they're woodcuts. They are woodcuts. Wood cuts. Yeah. And Cathay Colvitz, in a way, is probably, in the 20th century, the internationally best-known artist in this sphere. And indeed, Colvitz uh, was, a war later, the Second World War, was one of the German expressionist artists, very prominent, avant-garde, who were deemed by Hitler, a whole war later, as one of the degenerate artists of his nation. So, in a way, that's, of course, a badge of honour uh, for her. But um, her experience and her art was always for the suffering, for those affected tragically by the war, and there's a great humanity comes out of each of her black and white, purely black and white images. Well, Geoffrey, another uh, artist that I'm interested in is, is represented behind us, William Dyson. Dyson is, is one of the most fascinating um, artists and, and artistic and bohemian lives of the early 20th, 20th century. He really is Norman Lindsay's brother-in-law to begin mm. with. Uh, he's a newspaper illustrator. Uh, he is an officially engaged war artist. He's very sceptical about the war effort, so his works, although they are uh, in line with what the Commonwealth of Australia would have wanted from him documenting the war, there's an underlying sense that this is all futile and, and, and is this really moral? A lot of the official war artists here and, and abroad uh, were given very clear guidelines, not exactly censored, mm. but they certainly weren't to depict, first of all, the gruesome, brutal, up-close reality that we see in cinema today. I mean, mm. that was an absolute... You, you were meant to create images that were true and documentary, but wouldn't frighten the horses when they were shown at home. Uh, and of course, there are plenty of images that would have done precisely that. Now, interestingly, this work by Dyson is hanging right next to the Swiss-born but French artist, Theophile Steinlin. Um, and these works, all the Steinlin, come from John McCarthy's private collection in Sydney. So there are relationships even between the artists in this particular exhibition who are inspiring one another. Um, Dyson, Norman Lindsay, knew him, brother-in-law, and a collector and admirer of Steinlin's prints. Geoffrey, this is a very, very different piece from the works we were looking at earlier. Can you tell us a little bit about it? It certainly is different. This is one of two works by the British artist William Wiley. Um, and really, they're great panoramas and rather like almost every other work in this collection except the big Septimus Power we were talking about a moment ago has never been seen in the public realm. So this comes from the Art Gallery of Ballarat who very kindly lent this work to us for this exhibition and it is a great aerial perspective of the famous or infamous Battle of villers bretonneux uh, on the Somme at which Australian troops were heroic and successful. Looking down here it's very very detailed the number of horses and carriages and, and going into the distance it, it's just amazing the expanse that they've, the artist has covered. The, and the artist has covered this it is a real tour de force of painting from an aerial perspective. Thank you, Geoffrey. That's just wonderful. The exhibition is, is amazing. And I think that you mentioned that it is on until August the 24th. So everyone has a couple of, well, a month and a half yeah, to well, come in. You've got to be quick. You do have to be quick. <laughs> nice one. So I'm Nicole Brown and I'm signing off for Pulse Television.